And for the first time in my life, I think I may actually use a restroom at a rest stop. Well, good morning everybody out there in uh, YouTube land. This is Cruise Man with a very different motor vlog today. I am actually uh, on Interstate 10 East heading to Tempe, Arizona as part of my four day ride back to Texas from California. And if this is your first time uh, joining this uh, motor vlog, uh, you may not know it, but I'm a Goldwing guy. I've been riding a Honda Goldwing since uh, 2006. In fact, I've put over 200,000 miles on four different Goldwings since that time. So what the hell am I doing on a BMW K1600 GTL. As you can see, this is not my Goldwing. Well, to give everybody a little bit of background in case you have missed the story, a few uh, weeks ago, I was uh, in touch with BMW Motor Ag USA and they invited me to a press event in California to see the new K1600 GTL lineup for 2022. Now these uh, motorcycles have already uh, been out for a couple of months here in the U.S., but there are very few of them. And this was kind of the official press event. And they offered uh, to have me ride this K1600 GTL back to Texas from California. And uh, the reason I accepted the invitation and have kind of pursued this sort of thing is because many subscribers on my channel have been asking for more information on different motorcycles, different touring bikes, especially. You know, I've got over 40,000 subscribers now on YouTube and about 10,000 on Facebook uh, followers. And most of my subscribers have more than one motorcycle. I mean, yes, uh, a large percentage of them do own a Honda Goldwing, but some of them own multiple motorcycles. Some of them own other touring bikes, some of them own adventure bikes in addition to a Goldwing. It's all over the map. And I have had a lot of requests over the years for people saying, why don't you do a comparison between the Goldwing and the K1600 GTL or the K1600G? Is it G or GT? I guess it's GT. So that's part of why I'm doing this. And um, now if you're a BMW guy, you might be wondering why is a Goldwing guy riding this GTL and what does he think of it? Well, at the end of this process, I will be doing two videos. I'm going to be doing a thorough review of the motorcycle. I'm going to be able to have this bike long enough to really go over it bit by bit and my goal is to give you the most thorough accurate review that you'll be able to find anywhere I want to thank Lidlox for sponsoring today's video what do you do with your helmet when you park your bike at a restaurant or at a bike event or even at a friend's house if you're riding a BMW K1600 like this one you got a nice big fat top box where you can put the helmet and lock it away. Of course, that's assuming you don't have it all packed with other gear for a road trip. 
What do you do if you ride a bike that doesn't have a top box? Lidlock Helmet Locks offers a safe, secure, and simple solution. You can install Lidlock's Helmet Locks on just about any motorcycle, like I've done on this 2022 BMW K1600 GTL. Installation took less than 10 minutes. I did it in a hotel parking lot. And to lock up my helmet, I simply slip this helmet hanger through the D-ring on my helmet, insert it into the lid lock's body, and press that lock button. That helmet ain't going anywhere until I unlock it with the provided key. Oh, and by the way, I have had lid locks on my 2018 Goldwing for several years. So check out lidlocks.com. Now, most of my information on the Honda Goldwing is going to come from my 2018, and there have been some changes to the 2021 models and, and later. But uh, we'll be able to easily use our imagination. I can, I've already, just in 60 miles, been able to tell some differences. In fact, this is not the first morning I've ridden this bike. I rode the bike yesterday from Riverside, California to Palm Desert, where I spent the night at a Hampton Inn. And I just wanted to do a short day because I wasn't leaving the, until uh, early in the afternoon. I should mention BMW uh, did a very, very nice job. They put on a beautiful event uh, in a very nice uh, hotel, the Mission Inn there in Riverside. Uh, they really brought in journalists from all over the country, many of whom I'm sure you know or you've heard of if you follow this industry. Uh, I was kind of the odd man out. Nobody knew me. Everybody else seemed to know each other. But uh, uh, hats off to BMW for uh, BMW Motorrad for putting together a very nice event. And several of us uh, are getting to ride these bikes back to our hometowns. So I want. I didn't get on the road until about one o'clock in the afternoon. It was already very hot, about 96, 97 degrees. And I just didn't feel like spending seven hours in uh, 100 degree temperature riding all the way to Tempe, Arizona the first day. So I decided to head about 60 miles just to get the feel of the bike a little bit. Even though it's all highway miles, it's kind of hard to get the feel for the bike on the highway. But stopped in uh, Palm Desert at the Hampton Inn, spent the night, had a chance to read the manual last night, the owner's manual, to try to familiarize myself a little more with this uh, behemoth of a motorcycle. So today I'm going to talk to you about the ride from Palm Desert to Tempe, Arizona, where I'll be staying at an A-loft. I am not going to start reviewing this motorcycle until I've given it the opportunity or given myself an opportunity to really experience it over a few days. I don't think it's fair to do a review of a motorcycle until you've spent some seat time in the bike. It's actually a very nice morning. It's very windy. It was very windy yesterday on the ride from Riverside to Palm Desert very windy and very hot. When I pulled into uh, Palm Desert yesterday uh, to get to the hotel, it was uh, 104 degrees. I stopped and filled the bike up with gas before I went to the hotel and paid the most I've ever paid for gas. This bike does take premium and I paid, I think it was $6.52 per gallon pretty amazing how expensive gasoline is right now but as you can see from uh, where we are right now this terrain is rather barren and rather brown but it's kind of has its own beauty in a monochromatic sort of way at least there is some uh, landscape it's not completely flat like in West Texas which is what I'm used to riding um, it's about uh, almost six o'clock in the morning. I, I was going to stay at the hotel and have breakfast, uh, but they didn't start serving till six. And I saw the sun coming up, and I thought, you know, 
the earlier I get on the road, the better, because I'll just be avoiding that much heat. The rest of the ride to Tempe was pretty uneventful. I did stop at one point at a rest stop. It started getting very, very hot, so I felt like I needed to stop and hydrate at one of the roadside rest stops. Okay, I've pulled over here to a rest stop and uh, just going to get a drink of water. Still got about an hour to go, but it's 98 degrees, so it's getting pretty warm. I'm also going to take off my sunglasses because they are killing me. Dump out the uh, melted water out of my ice chest. And for the first time in my life, I think I may actually use a restroom at a rest stop. This will be a cruise man first. And... Uh, I will uh, turn the camera off. You don't have to watch. Well, that was just about as enjoyable as I expected it to be. But uh, honestly, I guess it could have been a lot worse. My first and perhaps my last time to use a rest stop restroom. I'm going to take another drink more hydration and uh, get on down the road and get to Tempe. So by the time I got into the Phoenix area the traffic was getting much heavier and of course the temperatures now are up to about 108 degrees and it's only 10 15 in the morning I mean it's ridiculously hot uh, fortunately it's not humid but still 108 degrees is hot and I think the high today is going to be 115 so I scurry down the highway as quick as I can uh, the GPS did a decent job uh, the navigation system I'll talk more about that in a future video I uh, did a decent job of getting me to the hotel it got me turned around once but it was okay because I needed to stop and get gas anyway and it took me kind of <laughs> right by a gas station and I paid the highest price again that I've ever paid for gasoline, $6.99 per gallon. Now, this is premium, but still, we're talking $7 a gallon for gas. I was able to get to the Aloft Hotel about 1045. Very, very nice hotel uh, here in Tempe, Arizona. If you're ever through Tempe and you're looking for a place to stay, it's a little more expensive than some of the other places, but I think it was well worth it. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll do a tour of my room in a future video because I'm going to compare the different hotels I stayed at on this trip. Uh, right across the street, there was a uh, uh, several restaurants. I was able to just walk over there and have lunch and had a very a nice lunch. I was pretty hungry because I didn't eat dinner the night before. So I'm looking forward to staying here. And, uh, of course, I'll be up again early tomorrow morning, uh, take the cover off the bike, and get going uh, as early as I can because it's going to be another hot ride tomorrow. Thanks again to Lidlocks for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, please, please take a second to click that like button. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click the subscribe button and that little notification bell so YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. There will be four Motovlog videos on this trip. And then at the end, I'll have my complete review of the BMW K1600 and a comparison of the K1600 to the Honda Goldwing. So you guys ride safe out there. I'll see you in a couple of days.